Hi y'all, Elon Musk's ultimate goal is to colonize Mars. But when and how, that's what we will explore in this new series about space plans to colonize another planet. In today's video, we are covering the very first steps of SpaceX's journey to Mars. As always, timestamps are in the description for a quick access. SpaceX's first Mars mission starting right now. Starship is a very big rocket by any standard. It will be capable of delivering 100 tons to low Earth orbit or LEO for an extremely low price. But because of its design, it will not be very effective at delivering payloads much higher than that, at least without refueling. But because of its low launch cost, sending multiple refueling missions remains affordable. Once fully refueled, the Starship is able to send its 100 ton payload up to Mars. The vessel is also equipped with ailerons, heat shield, landing motors, and landing legs, allowing it to deliver its cargo to the surface of a planet. Up to now, the biggest payloads delivered to the surface of Mars are the Curiosity and Perseverance rovers, which are around 1 ton each. That's two orders of magnitude better for a launch cost or those of magnitude cheaper. Of course, the Starship is still in its development phase, and a lot of problems remain unsolved. Let's take a look at the intended schedule for the first SpaceX Mars mission. Missions to Mars cannot be launched at any moment. Well, they can, but outside of some specific moments, the fuel needed is extremely high, preventing any reasonable payload to be delivered. Those moments are called launch windows, and in the case of a launch from the Earth to Mars, happen every 26 months, or 2 years, and 2 months. The next windows will be mid-2022 and late-2024. As of today, the Starship vehicle has been successfully tested multiple times during ascent and descent. However, a landing test has yet to be successful. Elon Musk declared at the 2020 Mars Society Virtual Convention he believed the odds were 80 to 90% in favor of a successful orbital test before the end of this year. However, the atmospheric re-entry and landing are going to be harder, and it is likely that some test starships will be lost in the beginning. The Super Heavy booster is about to begin its test, and is needed to, ne to achieve orbit, but it is believed to be easier to design and operate. Hope no Super Heavy booster is lost during development, with 28 Raptor engines to replace, this would slow SpaceX rate of progress. If all goes well, a high volume of flights should be achieved before the end of 2022, effectively ending the main development phase. This rapid reuse of starships will then allow for in-orbit refueling. This element is crucial and should not be overlooked. Transferring large quantities of liquids in orbit from one ship to another will not be easy, the lack of gravity preventing the use of pumps. SpaceX has signed a contract with NASA to develop that capability, and hopefully this will help them sort it out. As you can see, the schedule is definitely too tight to have a Mars mission ready for the 2022 launch window, which leaves no other choice than 2024 for the first launch towards Mars. Another factor to keep in mind is that at least at the moment I am making this video, which is early April 2021, SpaceX is still in the competition to develop a Starship to land the Artemis crew on the Moon. The Lunar Starship and the Martian one both have to be refueled in LEO, and pursuing the two projects in parallel might be hard for SpaceX. We should know if the company is selected by NASA by the end of the month. There might be another option though, I think the 2022 launch window could see a stripped-down Starship being launched. Although he was not talking about Mars, Elon Musk often presented the option of a stripped-down Starship. This version would have only the bare minimum to reach orbit, no sea-level raptors, only the vacuum ones, no aerodynamic surfaces, no thermal protection, fairing, landing sinks, or legs, this extremely lightened Starship will then, without refueling, send a small payload towards Mars, without the, the ability to land though. Still, according to Musk, there could be some modified Starlink satellites attached to the three Raptors engines mods. 
The cheap and mass-produced Starlink satellites have their own electrical propulsion and could in theory capture on a Martian orbit on their own if launched on a transfer trajectory first. This could be a cheap and easy option for the 2022 launch window. This is speculation on my part, but Elon Musk is clearly thinking about it, and we know SpaceX is capable of rapidly building a working prototype. By the way, that was really useful what I just shared with you, then I would love it if you would give this video a like. Just click the like button and thank you very much. But back to the official plans with a mission in 2024. A SpaceX mission to Mars in 2024 could look like that. A Starship with its 100 ton of Martian payload is launched into a parking orbit in LEO with empty tanks. The booster returns to the launch pad, is refueled, and a special tanker Starship is mounted on top of it. The tanker is then launched to meet the Martian ship and docks transferring 100 ton worth of liquid methane and liquid oxygen. However, this is not enough to fill the Starship tanks, so the tanker returns to the launch site, is refueled, and launches again, four times in total. With its full tanks, the Starship is now capable of enough acceleration to leave Earth and meet Mars eight months later. Using the thin Martian atmosphere, the ship then slows down as much as possible before lightening up its engines to land vertically on the Martian surface. If successful, the payload delivered in a single mission would be roughly equivalent to 100 Perseverance rovers. What could be the goals of SpaceX for their first Martian mission? Of course, for this first try, they would only send a cargo mission. The mission is not defined yet, but we can make some educated guesses as to what it will look like. The best place to land would be around middle latitude, to maximize the amount of sunlight available, providing heat and electrical power. To make the best use of the Starship's ability to shed velocity by using at the atmosphere, the landing site has to be in the lowest altitude, to maximize the air pressure. This would limit the shootable area to the northern hemisphere. The last requirement is optional for the first mission, but crucial for the coming crewed flights. In situ resource utilization. The crewed starships will need water to create their propellants for the return trip. Given how crucial this part will be for future missions, it is more than likely that the first cargo missions will carry an experimental ISRU device. The Perseverance rover already has the MOXIE experiment, designed to be a proof of concept, but this will be on another scale. What could this first mission achieve? First, it would be a proof that the Starship is capable of flying for months in, in interplanetary space, surrounded by intense radiation. Then, a communication test. SpaceX ships never had to travel this far, and a good radio link is necessary to achieve a success. The real deal, though, will probably be the entry and landing test. The aerodynamics of the ship will have to work flawlessly for it to have a chance, and the landing on uneven terrain will be a challenge by itself. And as we said, a production test of in-situ propellant, methane and oxygen will most likely be tested. In order to sustain this propellant production, SpaceX will have to come up with a way to produce a lot of electricity which means a lot of solar panels to deploy and batteries to connect. One last thing to get into consideration is the will of Elon Musk to have an effect on the public opinion. Even before founding SpaceX, he wanted to use his money to send a small greenhouse to Mars, thinking the sight of a plant growing on the red planet could inspire people and help his project of making life multiplanetary. I think this greenhouse will certainly be a part of the first Mars mission, along with multiple HD cameras and maybe a rover. After all, that's why SpaceX is that open about Starship construction, they want to inspire people. One final thought about this mission is that it will probably be safer to send two Starships at the same time, giving the company twice the chances of sticking the landing. In case of success of at least one of them, it could open the gates of the real exploration and building of the first base. 
What do you think will be a part of the first SpaceX mission to Mars? Tell me in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to be notified of the next episode, which will be about the second phase of the plan. Here on your left is a video the YouTube algorithm has chosen for you, and on your right is a link to my playlist about Starship development and technical details. I hope you liked this first episode of the new series about Mars colonization and that I will see you in the next one. This is Getting to Space, signing off.